John Barnett here, and welcome to what I'm calling 2024 in Prophetic Perspective. Uh, just to give you a backdrop of why I wanted to come to you today, uh, it's uh, January 3rd, Happy New Year, uh, and my challenge is Blessed New Year. Uh, may this be the most blessed new year that the Lord gives you. But I just finished uh, writing on my journal, 2024 Revelation, starting in January. Uh, this is just a typical, I don't know, they cost about $10, $8 on Amazon. Uh, I just buy them. They have this nice little uh, rubber band on them. I put the tabs down for every chapter of Revelation, and I'm going to be going through like I do every single year. And I'm going to study the book of Revelation, all 404 verses, prayerfully asking for the Holy Spirit to fill me with the purpose that God sent uh, the book of Revelation. And that is for me to know and see Jesus unveiled and to be transformed by that. So that's, that's my goal. But now let's get to the slides so I can share with you what's really a burden on my heart. 2024 that's just begun, uh, we're in the third day of this brand new year. How can we see the events of 2024 from God's perspective? That's what the prophetic perspective is. So basically, I've been doing since September with you uh, what I call the 12 signs of the end. And I want to go over those with you. Uh, basically, in Revelation, God gives us a picture of what earth looks like at Christ's return. He already gave us those in the Gospels. Do you see all these white references in white uh, font? All of those are from the Synoptic Gospels. The red ones right here in this chart are from the book of Revelation. And basically what Jesus said is that there are 12 um, kind of trends that are unfolding on earth. And the most emphasized one is deception and then wars and violence. And by the way, this is the order that they come out in in the book of Revelation, as well as in uh, the synoptic gospels. Food scarcity, pandemics, hatred of God and persecution of believers, quakes and seismic activity, global fires and smoke and gloom and volcanism going on. That's number seven. Uh, these solar flares burning the earth, uh, near earth objects, hurricanes and typhoons. That's what Luke talks to us about, the roaring of the, the sea. And then the death of the oceans, uh, which Revelation explains that, uh, that God progressively decimates uh, this life-giving uh, ocean that, that he built to sustain and flourish. Uh, it dies. Water becomes scarce. And then there's the alien invasion. So those are the, the signs. But what I'd like to do, and, and basically in, in this short uh, uh, time that we have together, I'd like to talk about just two of those trends, uh, two big trends that, that we're seeing in, in 2024. Uh, those two big trends, number one is deception. And deception is all about Satan's plan that God is going to allow him to unfold. He's already written about it, and we're going to go through what the scriptures say, especially from another class I'm doing, uh, Paul's Life and Letters. I'm teaching through every one of Paul's epistles in that special course that we're doing in Europe and, and uh, started last year, and you hear me talk about it all the time. But while I was in Thessalonica, I got to teach through Paul's two epistles to the Thessalonians. They're very, very much about the future and about eschatology, but especially about deception. Uh, Revelation uh, tells us about this deception. And it, we're going to see it here in chapter 13 in just a moment. But what the Bible teaches clearly is it's an invasion from the pit in the last days. And God tells us that most people on earth, the majority, the vast majority, all but the few that find the narrow gate are led astray by the evil. In chapter 13, we look at the, the real Terminator. Uh, I know Arnold Schwarzenegger 
portrayed the the uh, televised uh, kind of fictional Terminator. Well, the real Terminator is uh, the singularity, the technological singularity between a human and uh, computers that is AI, Satan, and a robot because we find in Revelation 13 that the Antichrist builds an image of himself that can speak and kill. And this, this is the ultimate Terminator, and that's what we learn about in Revelation. Now, this is what I just saw. Look, this is right at New Year's, um, 1230, 23. This article came through. A new kind of AI copy can fully replicate famous people. The law is powerless. The, the subheading is new AI generated digital replicas of real experts expose an unnerving policy gray zone and Washington wants to fix it. What, what is that gray zone? Well, Satan has big plans ahead for mankind. He wants to fatally poison every mind with his two big lies that, that he's promoting. Evolutionism. Evolutionism is that that instead of God creating as he tells us in the book of Revelation, in six solar, literal, 24-hour days, God made everything. Satan says, no, no. Over billions and billions of years, we've gone from simplicity to complexity. We've gone from single cells to what we see today, and we're evolving even beyond. And therefore, extraterrestrialism that we should look beyond the earth for answers and hope to find some, uh, you know, Star Wars, Star Trek, uh, some uh, superheroes that are beyond us that will bring us uh, hope. Well, the truth is that the real extraterrestrial truth has already come. It's right here. This book is not from this planet. And it's from God outside of our world who has come into our world as Savior, as Redeemer. And he's coming back as Judge. But imagine some of the greatest minds of the past, especially those that hated God, brought back in real time AI life likeness to start conversing with the world. That's what that article was about. It's about taking the greatest psychotherapist. Uh, there's uh, one European woman, I, I think from Denmark or somewhere or Holland, and, and of course, Martin Seligman from, from San Francisco, and let these, through AI, just answer anybody's questions and talk to them about everything that they can be and to do what Satan tempted and led Eve into sin to do, saying, you don't need God. God's, you know, kind of limiting you. What you need is to be all that you can be and, and allow these outside, you know what I mean. It's the whole evolutionary, extraterrestrial, Eastern religion, mysticism lie. And that's Satan's plan. Well, what we see is that we should beware of Satan as the angel of light. That's what Paul calls him. Remember that? Paul said, beware of the angel of light. He masquerades as an angel of light. How does he do that? Second Thessalonians. Remember Paul's life and letters that I'm teaching? Well, I'm going to give you a little snapshot. In fact, I'm going to summarize the whole lesson, the whole hour that we spend in Second Thessalonians chapter 2. And I'm going to summarize the 12 verses this way. God wants us to be lovers of the truth, okay? Here's what's going to happen and what we see unfolding right now. Uh, truth gets abandoned. Uh, verse 3, let no one deceive you by any means. Paul's telling the Thessalonians, for that day, that's the ending, this is the tribulation time, this is the launch of the Antichrist, and what it precipitates, the return of Christ, that day will not come unless the falling away comes first. What's that? Truth getting abandoned. By the way, I just, just now, when I was finishing up this lesson up in my office, I clicked the button and launched out onto YouTube my, my sad commentary on the state of the church how there's basic growing biblical illiteracy because of the total fixation and preoccupation and almost uh, total 
being addicted to digital devices that we see. And it's not just the, the little people. And it's not just the, the junior hires and high schoolers and college students. It's the baby boomers and the seniors that, that can't stop spending time in electronica, in, in the digital world, to the neglect of truth. Truth gets abandoned and the man of sin gets revealed. That's the tribulation, the son of perdition. Second thing Paul says in 2 Thessalonians 2 is that Almighty God gets pushed aside. The characteristic of the end of days and especially the the run up to the tribulation is God is gonna get pushed out. Uh, One uh, writer recently said that God has become weightless in our society. It used to be God pressed down on people's minds and decisions and government and, and, and there was kind of this Christianization of Western society. No longer. God is weightless. And Almighty God is getting pushed aside. This is what Paul says. Who oppose, This is talking about the Antichrist. Who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now, Paul is telling this to the Thessalonians, uh, a seaport city in modern-day Greece, ancient Roman huge hub in in biblical times, in Paul's times. It's where the mighty Ignatian way, uh, and it branched off into other branches, and also that land traffic converged with a port where the, the great trade that went on from Egypt and all over the Mediterranean came into the Roman Empire and spread on the network of roads. Why did Paul tell the Thessalonians all these things? because they were seeing the illustration of it. The emperors in Paul's day and beyond were claiming, and prior to Paul, at Christ's birth, the emperors were claiming to be divine. And that's why Augustus, the first emperor, built a temple to himself in Rome of the divine Augustus. And he just was following what his uncle, Julius Caesar, had started to deify himself and make himself like one of the gods. Well, that's, that's just an illustration of what we're going to see full-blown globally. I mean, the Roman Empire was basically around the Mediterranean. The Antichrist influence energized by Satan is going to be global and nearly universal. If God was not sending in the 144,000 and the two witnesses and the gospel angel Satan would have a total stranglehold on the world. But God is continuing to to bring um, souls to salvation all the way through the tribulation. But Almighty God gets pushed aside. Then number three, Satan amazes the world. The coming of the lawless one is according to the workings of Satan. So Satan's Uh, Antichrist and the false prophet are both energized by Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders. Verse 10, with all unrighteous deception. There we are. That's what we're looking at. The characteristic running up to the tribulation, the number one most frequent sign of the end, Jesus said, is going to be deception. And those who perish are deceived. Look at verse 10 because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. What is salvation? Becoming a truth lover. Becoming a follower of Jesus Christ, the incarnate word, who is the way, the truth, and the life. And Satan amazes the world, and they begin to believe his lie, and they don't receive The engrafted word, it's James, the first New Testament epistle, chronologically says, salvation is when we receive the engrafted word and we become lovers of the truth. The final step is God sends strong delusion on truth neglectors. So there are two types of people in the world, the saved and the lost, the wise and the foolish. But here in 2 Thessalonians, the truth lovers and the truth neglectors. Now, That's why I'm spending the time and and getting so excited about this. I would like to challenge you to deeper and deeper truth loving. 
Uh, let's read the text. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie, Satan's lie. Verse 12, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth. And when you don't believe the truth, what happens? You become a lover of the pleasures of unrighteousness. You, you don't care about God's holiness, God's law, God's uh, righteous revelation of himself. You just love unrighteousness. You love the darkness. You love the lie. You love Satan. So are you going to be a truth neglector or a truth lover? That's, that's the choice of life. That's the wide and the narrow road. That's the straight path. And that's the road that leads to destruction. So how can we grow in truth loving? That's, that's what I want to talk to you about. But number two, do you remember there, there's a, there are 12 of these trends? The second one is in what I call the Psalm 83 war. Now, do you remember in the Revelation picture, we find war, violence, and murder escalating. And, and it's just going to get to the point where, where so many people are dying that, that Satan is winning. He came to kill and to seal and destroy. And then, of course, Revelation says God wins. Because God brings a harvest that's uncountable out through the, the evangelism of the 144,000, through the witness of the two witnesses, through the gospel angel, and through his grace poured out. But what's going on right now? Well, I think we may be seeing the beginning of what is in the scripture called the Psalm 83 war. Now, you see that. You, all, you don't even need me to describe what you're looking at there, right? That's the, the current, what it's the 80-some, 90th day of the Gaza war. Uh, we already know from prophetic studies about the Ezekiel 38 and 39 war, but I don't think the Gaza war right now is that war. I think this, this shaping up is happening. Uh, basically, this is from Bloomberg. Uh, the red are the countries that right now are kind of in the U.S. sphere of influence. The green are the ones that are in the Russian sphere of influence. Look at what's going on here. Yemen, <laughs> that's really warming up. My question to you is, has the Psalm 83 war on Israel started? This is right out of the BBC News. It's talking about the strategic strait, the Bab al-Manab strait right there by Djibouti and Yemen and Eritrea. But what's going on? Well, in Psalm 83, the Palestinians, the Central Jordanians, the Egyptians, Hezbollah, Northern Lebanon, Palestinians, Northern Jordanians, the Arabs of the Sinai area, the Arabs of the Gaza area, uh, all of those people, the Syrians, and Northern Iraqis, all of them converge at the same time on Israel. Now, this is not Iran, Russia, uh, you know, Turkey and Sudan all coming up with, you know, across northern Africa. It's not the big one. It's kind of a preview. Here's some headlines that, that you're seeing. I, I'm showing you what you're seeing in today's news, okay? The Houthi rebels have escalated Red Sea attacks. $2.4 trillion of trade goes through the Red Sea. Uh, U.S. warships have come under fire. Rebels are firing drones. Armed Houthis are, are hunting ships. Okay? <laughs> then what happened? The U.S. sent its fleet. Britain sent its fleet. Uh, Israel has deployed its fleet. Uh, the French have boats out there. And rebels are firing missiles. And the U.S. is attacking Houthi, um, you know, raiding parties and killing the, the people on those boats. Okay, what does God want us to do when we see scary things, uh, when we see troubling things, when we see death constantly on our television sets and hear about it? And uh, what did one uh, commentator say today that we're getting um, fatigue from war? We're getting war image fatigue, they said. What does God want us to do? Well, why did God send us, send us the book of Revelation? See, that's, can I read it to you? Because uh, this is a challenge for you to study Revelation. So that's why I am. That's why I, I made my journal that I showed you right here. I mean, I, I spent, a, a, I don't know, about a half hour getting this all ready and marked up. And, and I 
putting in my favorite uh, charts from all the times I've taught, you know, the outline and everything that, that uh, I teach the book of Revelation. But why? Well, why did God send us Revelation? Revelation chapter 1. Revelation is the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants, that's us, things which must shortly take place. God wants us to know what's going on. Let's, let, let me keep tracking with the slides. What does God want us to do? He wants us to see Christ. He wants us to see Christ clearly. Why do we study Revelation? So that our love will grow, because we know Jesus better than ever before. Every one of the 20 plus, I think there are 24, 25 in systematic theology, there are 22 dozen attributes of God. Jesus Christ illustrates every one of them in the book of Revelation. There's no other book of the Bible where we find every attribute of God illustrated in Jesus Christ like we do in Revelation. That's to make us love him more than ever. Number two, hope. We need to understand God's plan for the world and see that God is shaping the course of history all around us. That, that's what gives us hope. That's what you can pick up when you're discussing with a friend at a coffee shop after class or after work or at lunch or with a neighbor that asks, what are you doing in light of all the economic upheaval and all the uncertainty in the world and, and everything that's going on? I mean, there was just an earthquake in Japan and that poor Coast Guard plane hit the, the Japanese airline plane with, what, 300 people on it and all the tragedy... Thankfully, all 300 people got off the plane, but the poor military people, five of them were killed. How do you have hope with death and despair and destruction and warfare going on? Because you understand God's plan. And that's why we have revelation. Finally, we're supposed to not only have love and hope, but peace. We're supposed to live confidently because we know where we came from. Revelation is all about our origin. It's all about our purpose, why we're here and where we're headed, our destiny. So, number one, I would challenge you to do an online study of Revelation. You can make a journal, just like I encourage the students to do. You can mark up your Bible, just like I encourage the students to do. And right here it is. It's at DTBM Academy. It's totally free of charge. All of the videos of the classes, all of the study notes that the students actually get in Bible institutes. I, I teach in Bible institutes and Bible colleges and seminaries in all different parts of the world. Everything that they get, you get right there on, on this DTBM Academy. Uh, there are actually three or four different Revelation courses. Uh, there's the Revelation 2023 that I just taught in 2023. There's the 2022 one. There's the 2021. It's right here. But just pick one of them. They're 20 hours long, 20 classes long. Do an online study. How about this? Start an audio study of Revelation. Some of you are not, I mean, you're watching this, but you really can't watch very long. In fact, I'm really pushing it being at 24 minutes. So that's why we've packaged the whole course on an MP3 CD. Here, I'll show you a picture of one. Uh, if you go to our dtbm.org, and then you'll see a tab that says resources, this is the front cover of the Revelation study. And it, if you, you can't read this fine print right here, but it says this disc contains 52 practical biblical lessons in both MP3 audio files and printable PDF files. Wow. Th this is how uh, the Academy started. Before, uh, way back when we started Discover the Book in the 1990s, uh, there wasn't such easily accessible internet that was fast enough for you to watch videos on. So we started packaging entire classes into these little uh, CDs. And these are data CDs, and these have all of the lessons in audio form and the, the transcripts of them, the study guides and everything, and it's all in one little package. And we sell these uh, for $19.99 plus postage. So you can get an entire course, your own copy, a hard copy like that, that you can study from. And that's Revelation. 
or, and here's my last challenge to you. You want to be a truth lover? You want to understand what's going on? How about take a year long devotional study of Revelation? You can do the online 20 hours or you can, you know, get a course in a 52 uh, hour course on a CD or this. Let me show you a picture of it. This, this is my dissertation. This is my dissertation. When I went to Dallas Seminary in 1989, <laughs> that shows how old I am. In 1989, I began doing my doctorate work at Dallas Seminary. Now, I was pastoring in New England uh, at Quidnesset Baptist Church in, in uh, North Kingstown, Rhode Island. And there, I asked the people if I could teach through the book of Revelation. And that's what's on uh, these different MP3 CDs that I show you. And then we moved on from there to Tulsa Bible Church. And I was still at Dallas Seminary. And I asked the Tulsa Bible Church, I said, could I teach my dissertation, one lesson per Sunday for a whole year. And they said, of course, what a, what a precious congregation. By the way, they, they went from, when I got there, I think there were 250 people. Uh, when I finished the dissertation, there were about, I don't know, a thousand people on Sunday morning. And then they just kept growing from there. But why I'm telling you that is, well, God did all that. And he opened their hearts to the truth. But what happened was, my dissertation was such a blessing in my life. I said, I don't want to put this on the, the bottom shelf of the library where all the dissertations go at Dallas Theological Seminary down in the basement somewhere. I said, is it possible to make this a book? And there was a man at Tulsa Bible Church who has a publishing company. Uh, you can see him right on the spine right there of the book. And he said, yes. Let me show you right here on the slides. This, this is just a, a quick two of the pages of the table of contents. Uh, week 20, we studied for the entire week the church at Laodicea. Then we spend a week studying Revelation 4, a week studying Genesis to Daniel, all the eschatological prophetic material from Hosea to Micah. Then we go from, from Nahum to Malachi. Then we study Revelation 5 for a week. See, this is a week, a week, a week, a week, a week. This is a course going through basically what I describe is every prophetic passage in the Bible seen in the form of a devotional. Uh, Friday of uh, this, this week, let's see, week 10. Okay, I'll read to you. Friday, temptation and struggles are not sin. Uh, yesterday, we looked at notable saints, and so I go through everything it talks about uh, in about how prophecy helps us expect Christ's return. And then at the end, I give this application, make a choice to live in hope. What can depression, discouragement, and faint-heartedness do for us? If we choose to live in hope, we'll cry out, and it inspires us to some of the deepest and greatest discoveries about God we can ever make. And I have discussion questions how to do that. Why am I telling that? Because some of you... Maybe you want an online course to stir up truth loving. Maybe you want an audio course. Some of you might want to actually take a whole year. It takes five minutes a day to read this lesson and then you apply it to your life. But whichever one you pick, the, the online course, uh, the audio course, the, uh, the printed devotional book, if, if you, but those cost money and the online one is free. Depending on your budget and your time, to grow as a truth lover in 2024, to see 2024 in prophetic perspective, this is what God wants. He wants us to live for him in our ever-darkening world. That, that constantly is on my mind. That's why, although I love to study in my study, that's why I go out into everyday life. I love going to coffee shops and having my Bible and doing my, my daily reading and writing in my journal. Almost every time, I'd say more than half of all the times I'm studying my Bible in any public place, God sends someone to walk up and say to me, what are you doing? And I say, oh, I'm studying my Bible. And they go, why? And I explain to them why. And God opens the door for me to share the gospel. God wants us living for him in our ever-darkening world. 
my challenge to you is, as you look at the events around us, as you see the signs, the trends that Jesus said are going to be getting clearer every day, how do you grow as a truth lover? By disciplining yourself to be in the word of God every day. My challenge to you is, why don't you get to know the book of Revelation better than you've ever thought possible? Take a college-level course at the DTBM Academy or just listen for 52 hours to to messages, weekly messages that that I delivered to the saints at Quidnesset and Tulsa Bible Church and Calvary Bible Church. And there are even some in there from conferences. Or take the the immersion into a whole year of a devotional study of the book of Revelation to start a small group. So whatever the Lord lays on your heart, my challenge to you is, in this growing time of deception, become a lover of the truth. Father, I pray that you will stir all of our hearts to be in your word each day And to find your word and eat it and find your word is the joy and rejoicing of our heart because we're called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. Help us to be just a small part of the tools you use in the lives of people and those that are listening to this and watching this video that their hearts might be stirred to jump in and get a prophetic perspective on 2024 before us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Thanks for joining us. See you soon. Thank you.